Good morning and welcome to Specking Trucks, Three Pillars of Compliance. Uh, this webinar is for everyone interested in configuring trucks that comply with manufacturer ratings, state regulations, and organization standards with the Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator. Truck Science partnered with NTA in 2019 to provide members with a next level solution for calculating axle weights. So we extend a special welcome to the NTA members joining us this morning. Whether you're already using the program or seeing it for the first time today, I hope that you'll pick up something worthwhile from this session. My name is Sarika O'Grady and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Truck Science. So let's talk about these three pillars of compliance. Firstly, your configuration must comply with chassis manufacturer or OEM ratings. If the manufacturer's spec sheet stipulates that the front axle can carry a maximum of 20,000 pounds, then your design must ensure that this rating or limit is not exceeded when carrying the maximum payload figure, which has been shared with those responsible for loading the truck. Secondly, there are bridge regulations which limit weights and dimensions for a particular configuration based on the number of axles, wheelbase length, tire sizes, etc. These may differ from state to state. And if the vehicle that you're configuring will be sold or operated in more than one state, the most restrictive of the limits across those states will apply. Of course, compliance with chassis manufacturer ratings and regulations for your state are not the only considerations. We also need to consider efficiency, in particular, the effect on fuel consumption of frontal area, cab to body clearance, etc. We also need to think about maneuverability, the rear overhang, the turning radius, for example, for a garbage truck that will need to turn in a cul-de-sac. We need to think about overall height and length for site access. We need to think about stability, and in particular, virtual, ver vertical center of gravity and the static rollover angle of your truck. We need to think about safety and the need to ensure that axle weight distribution supports safe steering and braking. And we also want to avoid undue maintenance or rework. This is where organization standards come in. We define the organization standards that should apply to our calculations. So for example, you can set a minimum or maximum percentage of total gross weight on the front axle, or the maximum radius of the smallest circle the truck can turn in, or the maximum center of gravity height, and many more. And any violations of these organization standards will be flagged as you go. I'm going to share my screen with you now, so you can follow along as I use the Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator. So to start a new calculation, I first need to choose a vehicle. For this example, we'll choose a Kenworth, the T880, six by four. And we'll choose this one with the 230 inch wheelbase. So just a couple of pointers about the interface firstly. Um, while your calculations will vary a lot, you will go through the same process every time to input information and to uh, produce your outputs. So we'll use the left-hand side of the screen to input vehicle, body, equipment, and payload information. We use this dashboard down here, and it's particularly uh, relevant to this webinar uh, to verify compliance with our, what we call the three pillars of compliance, manufacturer ratings, regulatory compliance, and organization standards. We also use it to display what we call favorite measurements and you can add more measure measurements there. The weights table is used to show detailed weight distribution and compliance information and to determine the maximum achievable payload for this configuration. Because the vehicle does not yet have a body, uh, the auto calculated maximum payload figure, which my mouse is uh, right by here, is zero for now. We'll use the buttons on the right-hand side to switch views and examine outputs as we go. So we've got a bridge view, center of gravity view, a turning radius view, et cetera. And along the top, you can print, save, or share your calculations 
and indeed define your preferences for using the program. So let's get straight to adding some components. Uh, when deciding whether to add an item as a body, equipment or payload, uh, we consider the following guidelines. A body has payload capacity, whereas equipment does not. And equipment is permanently attached to the vehicle, whereas payload is loaded on and off. So therefore, we're going to add a hook lift as equipment using this third icon down on the left. So I'm going to search for uh, Stellar Industries hook lift. and choose this one with a 54 to 62 inch hook height. Note that this equipment is available in the library because I'm logged in as an approved distributor of Stellar Industries products. We'll talk more about that later. To open the hook lift menu, I can simply click on it in the drawing. We can pin the dimensions for the hook lift equipment while we're working with it. Because this is a standard spec, you'll see the dimensions and weights are all locked. We'll compare this to a body template later where you'll have ultimate flexibility with dimensions and weights. We can, however, modify the position of the hook lift relative to the back of the cab or indeed the front axle. I'm going to set that to 18 inches to make some space for a tarping system. And then add the tarping system. So I'll find that in other. So you can see I've added the tarper now and I'm going to unpin the hook lift dimensions uh, so that the drawing is a little bit clearer. So I'll just unpin those. And again, I can change the position of the tarper relative to the back of the cab or front axle. Let's add a hook lift body now with payload capacity. So I click on body. Add hook lift. And this time I'm going to use what we call a template, which, as I said, gives you maximum flexibility in terms of uh, editing weights and dimensions. So I can hover over the body to select it, and then just drag it slightly forward. If I hover again and click on it to edit, you'll see that I can edit all of these length, height, width, and weight dimensions. I'm going to, just going to change the body length now. I can either change it here, or indeed I can click on it above the drawing, this BL body length dimension. Change that to 264. Martin, are there any questions at this stage or would you like me to carry on? Yeah, maybe we can just clarify something here. There's a question on utilizing the maximum permissible payload. And um, you probably mentioned it just after the question was asked. And uh, maybe just to explain that again. So the maximum permissible payload that we calculate in the app takes into consideration both the regulatory and the manufacturer limits. So the answer is yes, you can utilize the maximum permissible payload that we show in the app because it does already take the manufacturer ratings into account. And uh, I think that's, that's all for now. Okay, and I will expand on that as we go further. You'll see more about uh, you know, how the payload changes as we make other changes and and what the limiting factor is at different times. So you'll see that now that the body has been added, the program has automatically calculated this maximum achievable payload, which is 18,561. It's highlighted in blue here. And we can see that the limiting factor at this stage is the uh, rear axle, which is at utilization of 100%. And we'll, we'll talk about that again later. 
Um, so this is the maximum payload uh, allowed if the vehicle is to operate within the weight limits defined by the chassis manufacturer and the weight regulations for the chosen states. And we'll note how the payload figure drops if indeed I change the body weight. So I'm going to just change this from 100, 141 pounds per foot to an absolute pounds value and make that 5,000. And you'll see the payload has dropped now to 16,569. But let's say there's an end user requirement that this truck should be able to carry 24,000 pounds of payload. We can override the automatically generated maximum payload to the desired payload here. So if I just click in here to override and set that to 24,000, we would obviously be expecting uh, to have exceeded the manufacturer ratings or the regulatory limits at this stage. But let's see what happens. Okay, so we, we do indeed have some work to do as all three of our compliance indicators here are in the red. Uh, the manufacturer ratings are exceeded. Our design is not compliant with the federal regulations for the states that we have chosen. And I'll just show you what those states are. If I click into regulatory compliance, you can see I've got Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Obviously the limits are different. Um, you know, across different states as their neighboring states. I just thought it'd be a nice example to take those three. Um, should also just mention at this stage that these are the federal regulations for those states. Um, we're already working on the state regulations, which will be coming soon. Um, our organization standards are also not being upheld uh, because I have set a maximum, let's just pop in here. Uh, we've got the vertical center of gravity of the vehicle. I've set the maximum allowed value for that as an organization standard here to vertical CG of vehicle 70 inches. Um, okay, I'll close that. And we go back up a level uh, to keep an eye on all three pillars of compliance. So let's explore what's broken before we decide on a strategy to fix it. At a glance from the axle color coding, we can see that the rear axle group is overloaded. If I click on the permissible here of 34,000 pounds to see the values that this is derived from, the gross axle weight rating of 34,000 pounds, there's a bridge limit of 35,200 pounds, and the lesser of the two is of course 34,000 uh, pounds. So that is what is applied when calculating the maximum weight that this axle can carry, or what we call the permissible. So in this case, the manufacturer rating is the limiting factor. We can also see that the total vehicle weight has been exceeded with a utilization score of just over 100%. So if I click on that one, 51,500, this time around, it is the bridge our regulation limit of 51,500, which is the lesser, uh, whereas the gross vehicle weight rating is 60,000. But of course, the lesser again applies. So for a start, let's, let's extend the wheelbase to transfer more weight to the front axle. Extend that to 270 inches. And I'm going to reduce the rear overhang from 71 to 38. Having modified the wheelbase and rear overhang, we can also modify the chassis weights now. Going to override the front uh, chassis weight to 9,200. and the rear chassis weight to 7,300. You'll notice that these weights are automatically carried through to the, the weights table here. And then I'm going to override the gross vehicle weight rating to 66,000. You'll notice that there's another issue being flagged here at the rear. 
The body is overhanging the rearmost part of the chassis by more than two feet. But as I'm going to add a bumper, I'll just choose the last one here. And this bumper protrudes slightly. The gap is closed to just less than 24 inches. So the red dimensions flag uh, disappears. You'll notice that the total bridge limit has been increased from 51,400 to 54,500 now, which has also solved the total weight utilization issue we saw earlier. Remember that total column was showing in red because it was overloaded. That's no longer the case. This um, increase in the permissible for the total is as a result of extending the wheelbase. Both front and rear axles are still overloaded though. So let's try adding an axle. If it were just the rear axle that were overloaded, we could add a tag axle, but since the front axle is also overloaded significantly, we're going to add a pusher axle, which will take weight off both the front and the rear. We'll change the tire radius so the pusher looks more like a pusher. So I'll click on the pusher axle to open it, go to the tires tab, and I'm just going to change the radius to 19 inches. Having added the pusher axle, if we examine the axle utilization again, uh, we can see that the rear axles are no longer overloaded. But the permissible of 12,500 on the front axle here is still being exceeded. So we go to uh, yeah. We, if we look at this, uh, the gross axle weight rating of twelve thousand five hundred, uh, we can swap out this axle for um, an axle that can take uh, fourteen thousand. So let's just upgrade that axle. This has resolved the overloading issue on the front axle. And finally, we get a green tick for manufacturer ratings. We've still got an issue with regulatory compliance though, uh, which is caused by us exceeding this total weight limit by uh, just about 1%. If we undo the payload override, remember we overrode it from the maximum allowed payload, to this desired figure of 24,000, I'm just going to on override that, and we see that uh, we can achieve 23,513 here, which is, which is almost there, it's not too bad. The total permissible is limited to uh, 54,500 because pusher axles are treated differently in Georgia to North and South Carolina. So if I switch to the bridge view, On the bridge in Georgia, the pusher axle is not taken into account for the overall bridge or this group one to four. So you see the limit of 54,500. So adding a pusher axle in Georgia just does not increase the total permissible bridge limit. Interesting, it, interestingly, it does increase the limit for the rear axle group or uh, group one, two to four here. It takes the limit up to 42,000. But let's see what happens if we toggle regulations for Georgia off. So I'll just go up to my settings here. Uh, regulations applied. And I'll just uncheck Georgia here. And you'll see immediately that the permissible has risen to 58,500 for North and South Carolina without uh, catering for Georgia. We, if we go back to our uh, side viewer, indeed we can see the payload here. We have finally got over our 24,000. We're at 24,169 now. And we'll see that more clearly here in the weights table. 
my toggle regulations for Georgia back on, that payload will drop again. And we're just back to 23,513. Are there any questions at this stage, Martin? Uh, yes, is, there are a few more, maybe one that you can also demonstrate, and that is the options or the preferences uh, in terms of specifying uh, wheelbase or CT. Okay. So obviously the one affects the other one, and you can only change one or the other one, but you have a choice. Okay, so you'll see under the drawing here, I have the CT is uh, marked but not editable because it's not in blue. So it's 201.8 in this case, and the wheelbase is in blue, which means it is linked and I can edit it. If I click on it, 270 there, if I pop this menu in, you'll see that I've, both, I've got the wheelbase here and the CT. If you prefer to, to edit CT and have the wheelbase uh, dimension locked, just go up here to settings. Uh, preferences, specify chassis dimensions as cab to tandem, CT or cab to axle, and click OK. And you'll see the CT is now editable, the wheelbase is not. Okay, thank, thank you, Sorica. Maybe an, um, another one was an, a good question about sort of demounting or mounting and demounting uh, the outlift body. You know, do we calculate any clearances? And uh, maybe you can just explain that and explain how we deal with requests for future functionality. Okay, so we don't, uh, are, you, are you talking about um, stability, yeah. is it Martin? Oh, well, more, more dynamic cal calculations, I can maybe just explain that. So if uh, when demounting um, the hook lift body to ensure clearances probably at the back of the chassis. So we do not uh, take, uh, we do not currently do dynamic calculations and the same would apply to a, a dump uh, body. We do not uh, do the, the tipping motion. This is either something that quite a few customers have requested in the past. So we note down these uh, feature requests and then uh, prioritize what features we add next based on how many uh, users request uh, the same feature and also how we evaluate the value that these features will add to all our users in the future. Okay. Okay, will I carry on? Yep. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we've got our, our two green ticks at this stage for manufacturer ratings and uh, regulatory compliance. But we're still stuck here on our organization standards in red. So again, if I just drill down there, I can see that the vertical center of gravity of the vehicle uh, has exceeded the limit that we specified for it. I'll just show you where to specify that. I open this settings and in organization standards here, I've uh, set a maximum of 70 inches for the overall vertical center of gravity of the vehicle. This is uh, one of a number of things that one can set up as an organization standard. So for instance, you can set a limit for a minimum or maximum body clearance, um, a minimum gross weight on the vehicle front might be 20%, uh, the overall height. Again, if there was uh, some kind of a height restriction in the, on the site that this vehicle would be operated in maybe, um, et cetera. So th that's where you find these organization standards and you'll see that we've set the maximum of 70. So the issue here is that the overall center of gravity of the vehicle, the height of that center of gravity is actually at almost 72 inches. If I switch to the center of gravity view, you'll get a better visual on that. So you can see here it's at 71.9, the, the um, overall center of gravity. Um, so if I click on the body, um, okay, so if I click on the, the body uh, to reduce the height here, I can just use this, this uh, ticker here to reduce the height ever so slightly. Um, and we've still got our red X, but if we do it once more, um, we're in the green. 
the vertical center of gravity is now just below 70 inches. Um, so if we go back up a level here to our dashboard, uh, you can see we've got all three ticks. And remember in this case, the center of gravity limit is an internal standard for our organization, not something that's stipulated by law or by um, the chassis manufacturer. So finally, we're all in green. Um, we've got a payload of 23,513. And you can see that the um, maximum capacity of this vehicle in those three states is 54,500. And with a payload of 23,513, our gross weight is 54,500. Therefore, we've got unused capacity of zero pounds and a utilization of 100% which is a great result. Um, you know, you can rest assured now that you're using the entire capacity of this vehicle. So uh, not bad for, for 20 minutes work. Um, so I guess at this stage, it's time to export all of your hard work to a PDF document for sign off um, and something that can be shared with your stakeholders uh, to reassure them that you've right sized the vehicle and you're getting the best out of it. Um, so before I do that, I will just import a DXF drawing of uh, a more attractive, a very similar body. So I'll just click on the body here to remove this template. I can just cut it right off. And then if we go to add a hook lift body yet again, but this time import a DXF drawing, choose a file. Uh, and just drag it to the XY here. Specify the body length. The height is automatically scaled from the drawing. Let's give it a width. And again, we'll specify the body weight is 5,000. We'll just give it a name. We'll just pull it forward slightly. that far. So I just use these uh, the undo here to to correct my mistake. There we go. So we've imported a nicer drawing for the report and then lastly just before I uh, export this to the report. I might want to hide the dashboard if that's not something you want to share with other stakeholders. So in the settings, or I can indeed do it here. I just uncheck uh, show dashboard. And now I can print whichever view I'm currently in. So if I was in the center of gravity view, I can print that view. Or, uh, and I can indeed toggle on various center of gravity points if that's something that's of interest by clicking them. But this time I'm just going to go back to the, the summary side view and export the PDF. Um, this PDF, document is customized with your logo. There's a sign off area at the bottom of the front of the first page here. Um, it's just a summary of everything you saw on the previous screens, um, as well as a detailed layout and center of gravity of each of the components. And you can add additional notes and warnings as well. Um, Martin, before I exit, save and exit this calculation, are there any further questions?
Uh, yes, there are a few more. Let me just see that I can cover them all. So the DXF, or, the, or there's a, there was a question about uh, drawing own trailers. And I'm assuming that that refers to the DXF import feature for trailers. So Sorica is showing the DXF import feature for bodies. Um, and we also have it for payload and for equipment. But at this point, that feature is not ready yet for, for importing your own trailers. So currently the trailer feature is limited to template trailers, which have generic graphics and also manufacturer trailers. So perhaps a recommendation from our side, if you'd like to have one of your own trailers in the database, and even in your personal database only, uh, you can request that and we will add it um, uh, for you only, or we can put it in the public library. Maybe, sorry, if you can just show that section, uh, or, or you can dem demonstrate uh, how uh, one can request an item to be added to, to the library. Okay. Okay, that, oh, that um, yeah, and then, I've, then I have a few more, but maybe just uh, show that. Okay, I can just maybe put on a trailer on here as well. Uh, just add a, a total help now. So these are all templates in here. Um, if I just go back one level and go to say center axle drawbar, these are items in the public library as, as uh, Martin has men mentioned here. Um, the those with the the globe icon are in the public library. I can also save trailers to my personal library. So the templates are, are denoted by these uh, template icons. Then the personal library and then the public library. But as Martin said, you can if it's not available, you can use a template or you can ask us to add one for you. Um, and that's just a simple form here where you request a trailer with the spec sheet, um, make a model and and submit that request to us. Okay, thank you for that. Then there was a question about adding specifically a Tata chassis. Um, maybe you can just explain the vehicle request feature and the core markets uh, for which we add vehicles. Okay, so that's a very tiny trailer, but just to show you um, the trailer feature, I'll go back out to the, um, the home screen here. I guess I better save this first. So these, these are the brands that are already in here. Um, if you're looking for a, a, a Tata model, if that's available in our core markets of uh, the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, um, you can request a model to be added here too. And again, that's just simply request a vehicle here and you can fill out the same um, make a model information and spec sheet, any additional notes and send, submit that. So as a full subscriber, you are entitled to request vehicles, bodies, equipment, payload and trailers to be added to the library. Okay, then related to that is, actually, is the template vehicle feature. There's a question about um, making alterations to a template vehicle. If you can maybe just open up a template vehicle just to demonstrate the sort of generic graphic, uh, maybe a chassis cab. Uh, the question is, do I need to do anything after entering wheelbase, axle weights, et cetera? Um, so maybe you can just demonstrate the flexibility or, or, or the yeah, versatility okay. with template vehicles. Okay, so as, as Martin mentioned, this is a theoretical vehicle. It's not a vehicle that's on the market. Um, therefore, uh, you can make any changes you want really. Um, so where, where you, when you're working with something like the Kenworth T880 that I was just working on now, you can't change, say for instance, the cab dimensions because obviously the drawing would be uh, not representative of a Kenworth T880. But with this, in the, this case, um, as Martin mentioned, you have a lot, more, um, a lot more dimensions here and you can change them as you like. Um, you know, it might, might not be the prettiest, but you get the picture and um, we can 
increase the CT. Um, again, you can switch back to changing wheelbase instead of CT if that's uh, your preference. Um, again, you can change height with add axles. Uh, I guess the more information you input here, the more uh, reliable the information will be coming out and the, you know your payload figure and that kind of thing so for instance if you are changing the wheelbase of the ct you probably would want to override the chassis weights um yeah you know the, there's a lot of flexibility here uh but then that comes with a lot of responsibility i suppose to make sure that you're uh, putting in as much information as you can find I think that covers it quite nicely because all those tabs on the menu there. So if uh, the question is almost, uh, you know, how, how does the user know when they've entered all the information? And by going through all those different tabs for length, height, width, and weights, uh, fuel tanks, crew, once you've actually gone through all those tabs, you will have specified all the required information. And I suppose it's worth pointing out here that there are sensible defaults provided. So you'll see that there was a, a default chassis weight here, which would be uh, representative of a normal six by four vehicle. Um, so, you know, where there's missing information, there are helpful defaults, but we would always recommend that you override as many of the defaults as you can. Yeah, okay. And then there's, there was another question about customizing the sort of chassis weights table there. Now there are quite a few line items in the, in the weight summary there chassis weight, for example, the body equipment. And the question was, can some of those be hidden? Um, and also, or, and can that weights table be exported to Excel for further processing? Um, and I suppose the question could be taken a little bit further in terms of customizing the report to hide uh, certain items. And maybe you can just explain our sort of uh, functionality or future plans for, for customizing reports and um, say the weights table. Okay, so um, firstly the weights table, there are some different views onto this weights table. So you can see detail of fuel and crew uh, vehicle itself. Of course, if there's a trailer that, that becomes relevant. So there are uh, different views onto the weights table, but they are, um, you know, they're not customizable in themselves. Um, and the second part of your question was about, oh, customizing the PDF. So um, if I just uh, generate a PDF from here, it gets generated with the view that I'm currently in and only that view. Um, again, with, you know, the, the PDF is customizable with your logo, your notes, um, your contact details, et cetera. But what's included in the, in, the, um, in the PDF, apart from switching the dashboard on and off, is pretty much set in stone at this stage. We do have, have uh, plans and in response to a lot of requests, like Martin mentioned earlier, we get user requests to change things around and we record all of those. We consider them all every time we work on a, a sprint as we call it, or a development effort over two or three months, we prioritize um, features that we think will have the greatest impact for the greatest number of our users. So we do indeed have plans to make this PDF more, more flexible so that you could potentially include more than one view in here, more than one drawing uh, and exclude other information. There's, there's some small customization here. So you can exclude, uh, say for instance, this weight, if you watch my mouse here, the weight and center of gravity section. Um, and I'll just apply that change. So you'll see now we've just got a two page report because we have um, excluded the weight and center of gravity. But yes, indeed, we do in intend to make the report more customizable for you in the future. Okay, then another question about adding electric vehicle chassis. Um, and that is something that we are aware of that more and more manufacturers are bringing out uh, electric uh, chassis. We are trying to source the re required information uh, to be able to add those vehicles in certain applications, uh, but we are struggling to get some of that information from the manufacturers. In some cases, the information is just not ready or it's not yet available on the bodybuilder portals. But if you can assist us or even provide us with the uh, specifications um, for an electric vehicle, we can most certainly add that. The sort of information that we require is that uh, sort of 
side view drawing that Sorika would have sh uh, showed in the demo. It's just a two dimensional side view drawing. And then together with that, all the dimensions and weights for the vehicle. And when it comes to electric vehicles, the one item that we have not been able to get in some certain cases is sort of the chassis weights, front and rear chassis weights. And uh, in some cases, that's perhaps because of the different options in terms of battery sizes. But also these vehicles are uh, normally heavier than your uh, diesel and gas versions. So the weight of the, vehicle, uh, of the chassis is obviously critical when it comes to your, any calculations uh, that you will do on those. Okay, so please submit your requests for those chassis and we'll do our best to, to source that information. Um, then there was another question about um, specifically now the, the role of unit or, or relating to role of units or any sort of equipment or body types can, can users add their own ones. And maybe just to remind them or show them again where the DXF import feature is. So yes, if, if you only see products from manufacturers that don't uh, relate to you, you're looking for a different manufacturer's product, you can either request for us to add it, or you can use the DXF import feature to add your own. Yeah, that's what Sorek is showing there now. And I, I suppose it's worth just pointing out there that, um, you know, you saw that I, imp that I used some seller products uh, from the library and I mentioned that those are not available to all users. They are only available in the library for approved Stellar Industries distributors. So if you're a body or equipment manufacturer and you want your products to be made available um, either to all users or to just your distributors, um, you can reach out and we'll of course arrange that for you. Uh, likewise, if you're a distributor and you'd like to see more products in the library, uh, we can talk to the manufacturers on your behalf. So that is something that's uh, growing um, in popularity right now is this ability to share products privately between uh, manufacturers and distributors. Okay, then there's a question about the difference between the professional and enterprise editions, uh, whether you know, detailed truck specifications are only available uh, in one or the other. Um, and maybe you, you can go into some of the differences in the Enterprise Edition, uh, mainly just the prototype vehicles, maybe. Uh, I think the question is referring to truck specifications. So if you can just explain prototype versus uh, only what's on, available to the market. Okay, and so what, uh, maybe if we're, if we're done with the calculation, I could maybe just uh, pop back to the presentation. I do have the comparison between the essentials and the professional edition in, in the presentation. Okay, okay. The, uh, then wait, wait, before you do that, maybe we'll just finish one or two other questions. Um, how to show or how to change the chassis height or frame height. Now that is something, okay, you can show, you're showing it there, sorry, Kat. Maybe I, just to I explain here, yeah. that we, we do not yet cater for changing the chassis height on a manufacturer vehicle, but that it can be changed on a template vehicle. Yeah, so there, there you can change it on a uh, template. We, we have documented uh, a, that feature request to change the chassis height on manufacturer vehicles as well. And that would apply when different tire sizes have been chosen or a different suspension, which would affect the chassis height. So there are some uh, eff effects on the, on the graphic. And that's why it's a little bit more complicated to do that on a manufacturer vehicle and a lot easier here to do it on a template vehicle. But we will just um, uh, add more users to that uh, feature request. Then I think one more. Uh, are the chassis weights being taken from a truck spec or is truck science estimating the chassis weights? Maybe I can, or you can maybe answer that uh, question, Sorika, in terms of uh, the proposal documents that we sometimes get and yeah. uh, the bodybuilder portals. Um, yeah, so uh, to answer your question, they are not being estimated. They are being taken from a chassis spec, but as you know, depending on options, uh, the spec for the chassis can vary across you know, very, the different trucks that come, come out of the factory, I guess. So uh, we would normally 
you know, while we have provided this 8,556, if you have a cup holder in, in the cab that's heavier than the, the um, standard spec, uh, your chassis weight may vary. So we would recommend that you um, verify these against the proposal document from the dealer. Yeah. I know we're just running slightly over. Martin, are there any other questions or do I just fly on and wrap yeah. Okay, maybe just to answer that, uh, one, add one more thing to that, uh, the truck specifications. Those detailed uh, graphics and specs that, uh, of the vehicles are available in all the editions. So that Kenworth that Sorica showed, uh, showed in the demo, that would be available in all three of those editions. But the, the, with the difference being that in the Essentials edition, you cannot request to have uh, missing chassis added to the database. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Okay, so, so just to recap, if you're in uh, the business of delivering safe, legal and efficient trucks, it's vitally important to keep the first two of these in mind, manufacturer ratings and road limits. Um, and then the third pillar is the organization standards. These will really set your organization apart as a company that takes pride in doing things properly. But regardless of how you do this analysis, the weights analysis, whether it be by pen and paper, um, using a spreadsheet or using a program like this or another one, um, it is just very important that this, that this work is done. It makes sure that you've got um, the right size vehicle and that you're using uh, the vehicle to its full potential, I guess. So I know we've covered a lot in a short space of time and you may have found the pace a little fast at times. Um, if you're not already using Truck Science, I would encourage you to go to our homepage, truckscience.com, and click on Start Free Trial, and you can help yourself to um, a week's use of the tool for free. It's the, probably the best way to learn uh, how the tool works is to just get your hands dirty with it. Uh, NTA members who add their membership details will have their trial automatically extended from seven to 30 days. And then they'll also qualify for an NTA discount on checkout. Um, also, if you found the pace a bit fast today, don't worry, all new users of the program are invited to a personal onboarding session uh, with Martin or one somebody else on our team, uh, where there's plenty of time to slow down and ask as many questions as you like. If you feel you could still use a personalized demo uh, to work through a typical scenario for your organization, either for yourself or uh, with some colleagues, we will gladly set that up for you too. So if you just want to leave a note in the Q&A or at the end of the webinar um, with your name, we'd be happy to reach out to you and, and get that set up. So uh, that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to end the webinar in just a moment. Um, I hope you've learned something uh, new from the webinar and I look forward to seeing your comments. And so please write the webinar and leave any comments or questions that are still outstanding. And indeed, if you'd like to receive a quote uh, for one or more users to use the tool, just indicate how many users you think you'd need and we can send you on a quote as well. So thank you for joining us and uh, goodbye. <laughs>